That was Hetsi Koji, and she is a U.S.-based Ghanaian, multiple award-winning gospel minister whose passion for the kingdom of God has inspired her musical journey. And you can attest with her voice, in 2021, she was uh, she is the recipient um, for the Gospel Artist of the Year and also Female Vocalist of the Year at the Ghana Music Awards USA 2020. And from her voice, we can attest to the fact that 
My oh my, the voice is powerful. Yep. I don't know if yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, of course, yeah. I loved it. You know, me and my gospel people, so like I was in it. Oh, Jesus. You were where? You know, in the spirit. I, yes. The, the realms. You see, Jesus, you love me. Use that and you give us something. If I do, you know, go do the show. Oh, please. <laughs> but anyways, that was amazing from Hetty. Yes. Yep, yep. I hope I got the name well. Hetty Koji. Koji? Yes, I have a name. I know it's a Kogi. No. Ah, it's Koji. Koji. But hey. oh, okay. No, don't worry, don't worry. I'm, just... <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Hetty, how are you doing? It's good to have you here. I mean... Hetty, I don't know if your microphone is on. Yeah, you could, you could just... Your microphone. Yes, yes that's it's great. On. Yes. Um, your voice. Even, it's not even part of my questions, but then I want to find out. How do you maintain your voice? For someone who is a vocalist, who can actually do the high notes, because this is even something small, uh, just the tip of the iceberg. How do you regularly maintain your voice, prepare your voice for a show? Um, a lot of vocal training goes into it. And I, usually when I have a show coming up, there are a lot of things I try to stay away from, taking too much ice block. I'm, <laughs> I'm addicted to it, so I try to minimize it okay. because it somehow has some effect on the voice. And then also knowing that you know how to pace up your warm-ups because when you have continuous show going on, you don't want to crash when your main show is coming up. Sometimes, you know, people do extensive rehearsals, and then for the main show, they lose their voice. Yeah. So I try to break and do the warm-ups in between. And then there are times where you really don't have to talk too much. Sometimes hey. when you're preparing for a show, you don't, you're not all over the place always talking. So you try to preserve the voice by avoiding certain foods that has too much oil in it and then avoiding too much cold uh, substance as well. That helps maintain the voice. Yeah. At least we have like two weeks, so we'll get you talking before the main show. So we wouldn't cause any disruption. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. But with, with, a, with a surname called G, right. briefly tell us about yourself. So I'm um, Ghanaian born, mm -hmm. Ewe, to be spe uh, specific. My dad and mom are Ewe, and Koji is my daddy's last name. Oh, okay. Yes. Which, which part from the... Uh, Bato Aveime. You okay. know where the rice factory is? I don't know if yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. So that's where I come Oh, Aveime. From. Okay. 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 Wow. Great. That's a very nice name. This is my first time hearing it. Koji. That's what I, I, but because I said, you are outside. And then it's a Koji. Koji. Right. <laughs> I was really trying to be careful. Right. Koji. Yes. But growing up, mm -hmm. what made you decide to do music? I think um, the motivation was from my parents. I was early exposed to church. Mm -hmm. We were dragged to church, whether you like it or not, at a very early age. So that was the only thing I was familiar with growing up, and then I started singing at the age of um, eight when um, I was younger. So at that point, it was the only thing I kept doing. And then whilst I grew up, I noticed that it was more so, it was more than just the singing. There was a ministry part attached to it because when you minister, people always come to say, oh, your ministration was powerful. So I decided to harness that, uh, I mean, ministry part of it. Yeah. So I think that was the reason why I chose gospel. But with that said, Jesus Christ came to die for me. And the only thing I can do to return that favor is to sing his songs. I cannot go the other way around. Okay. So that's why I think I decided to do gospel. Do you remember the first time you actually sang to a congregation? Yes. When was it? Where was it? And what was the experience like? I think it was, I think when I was around 10, 11, at, I was born and bred in Jolu. So we were at Pentecost then. And uh, I went, we had this convention and our choir was ready to minister, you know. So when we minister, everybody, you know how those times they used to put collection bowl yeah. in the middle yeah, and we were singing. So, that, so a lot of, like the, that day we got a lot of money. So that is one of the indications that the song went well. That was good. And then okay. apart from we getting a lot of money as a group, you see a lot of people throwing money on you. Mm -hmm. And then after that, everybody said, oh, oh yeah, dear, oh, who normally dear, so... You know, that gave you that good feeling that you yeah. did something great. So that is what I can really remember yeah. growing up, yes. And when you started singing mm -hmm. professionally, mm -hmm. um, what do you think uh, is the reason behind people listening to your music, personally mm -hmm. for you? My life itself is a testimony. So usually I try to incorporate a little bit of whatever I go through or how good God has been to me. Um, through my song, if you listen to the El Shaddai song, it's about appellation, but the other ones that are local, it's more like Asida and all that stuff. 
So I think my song tends to uplift the soul. Like if you are down and you listen to my song, it gives you that, you know, excitement in your spirit. So I feel if somebody is down and my song can bring you hope, that it will be the only motivation why somebody will listen to my song. My songs are not intended to make you more sad or maybe okay. God, why me kind of situation. So I think <laughs> the feeling good and being optimistic that everything is going to be okay, irrespective of what you're going through, I think that is what, I mean... Encourage people to listen to more of my songs. My colleagues will come in. Yeah. Helen and this one will come in. But my, my final question is, I have listened to your song. And with having two um, like environment background, you are in the US yes. and also sometimes you come to Ghana. Yes. Where do you pick your inspiration from? Is it from your personal experience? Is it from the community or the environment? Or maybe suggestions from people? It's geared towards more... Um, my personal life, as I indicated, and then more of inspiration through the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when I um, go to church and maybe the pianist is playing something, mm -hmm. that is what inspires me to write. I'm the kind of the spontaneous, if you right, give me okay. something yeah. spontaneous, I could just create something on it. So I think the environment plays a role. The Holy Spirit is the key motivating factor because he inspires me to even yeah. write whatever I write. And then sometimes I want to I want to tell a story about my life. There's this new song that I'm working on called My Journey. It's a, a gospel jazz. That's a different okay. genre. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring our version. That tells my journey. So you get to hear a different part of me that you've never heard before. So I try to fuse everything mm -hmm. in based on the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gospel jazz. Uh, yeah. I, I would love that. Yes. I would love that. You now, like so, so on the environment thing, uh, how do you um, get to choose the type of song you want to put out? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure out there in the States... There's a different kind of sound right. there. Yes. And the way you come to Ghana, there's a certain sound that, you know, maybe it's now picking up like the contemporary style mm -hmm. as compared to the States mm -hmm. where... You may you may have to do contemporary. Right. You know, you can't go and do. You know, so <laughs> sure. how, how 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 do you do that? You know, to choose how it's going to sound like. Mm. So with um, a song like El Shaddai, it's more so cuts across the way it is. More like mm. a gospel um, Afrobeat. Yeah. So when somebody in the states, for my demographics where I am in the states, because we have different cultures there, you try to make songs that everybody can. First of all, the 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 bridge is making sure it's English mm -hmm. so that if Hispanic even hear the song, they understand what you're trying to communicate. Okay. And then Ghanaians over there who are also elite or not, they can also understand that you're trying to say El Shaddai. Then when you come to Ghana, when I want to make songs specifically for Ghanaian markets, that is where I did a new song, Testify. That is a fusion of the English and typical tree. Mm -hmm. So that way it can also, so I try yeah. to do it half and half. When I'm trying to target the Ghanaian community, I try to push more of the tree in it. But when I'm doing the contemporary street, strictly for that, I try to do the American um, community mm. kind of sound. And the journey gives you, the new song that I'm talking about, okay. gives you that kind of gospel jazz, American kind of sound, like 40s kind of mm, vibe. Okay. So that is targeted towards that community. So I try to that? bridge it in house. So when you listen to my songs, at least, when you're a Ghanaian, you can find a song that equally meets your need. And then when you're also outside there, you can find a song that equally meets your need. So that is how I'm approaching it. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know how you're going to you take this, but I mean, it's true. Or most of it, what I would say, it may be true. <laughs> Except for gospel musicians, the, the females, mm -hmm. whether you be, you're married to a pastor mm -hmm. or you're aligned to a church, you're <laughs> you aligned to a church, mm -hmm. right? These two sometimes could help you in mm -hmm. your journey. Mm -hmm. If you are doing it alone as a female, not married to a pastor or, you know, affiliated to a church mm -hmm. of that sense, it's difficult. Um, what, what is your story like? I'm not married to a pastor, first disclaimer. Okay. I'm married to somebody <laughs> who is not a pastor. Um, but I have an amazing husband who supports my ministry. Mm -hmm. He understands what I'm doing, so he's just so supportive. I have two amazing kids. So whilst I'm here, he's taking mm -hmm. care of the kids. So that is so amazing. Okay. So he okay. understands the kind of ministry that I am in. Mm -hmm. Now, with the church, I was a Royal House um, Chapel member here in Ghana okay. before I traveled to the state. So when I traveled to the state, I am still with Royal House Chapel, the U.S. branch. Okay. okay. So that gives me, I leverage the relationship that I have with the church. And I do have a concert that I'm going to be talking about in a bit. Yeah. And this will be our fourth year in the U.S. So I usually leverage the relationship with the church plus the resources that God has blessed me with to do this. So that's how I try to bridge those two as well. Okay. So two things, uh, because the Holy Spirit <laughs> lives in that, you don't hear my daughter, my daughter's situation, but there's an instance and an intuition. When you, you um, hear the beat, 
you 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 feel like something like you try to put words together. Yeah. So when you try to put the words together, the lyrics together to those beats, you 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 try to go back and fix it. Like does it make sense to somebody? A typical example, my song Overflow like this. Yeah. There's a song called Overflow. I wrote that song specifically for my Overflow concert. It wasn't yeah. a separate song. Mm. And that I told the Holy Spirit that I don't want to use somebody's song to be running my ad when mm. I'm doing my promotion for my concert. So please inspire me to write a song. And that, I don't know, I was just driving from church and I got the, the chorus, like, oh, oh, I just got that one in my spirit. And mm. then from there, I started building on it. So I think you just, you just get the, it's a vibe, it's a feeling, but you don't hear voices speaking to you per se, mm. but it's more so like an intuition that comes to you. Okay. I saw your video, El Shada, and I saw you driving um, yes. more or less like a forest area and all that. Yes. What message were you trying to send across? Why that particular place? So shooting video always usually comes with different location. Mm -hmm. And sometimes location doesn't really necessarily depict the song. Right. Yeah, so maybe I chose a location because it's talking about the forest. El Shaddai, God is almighty. And he created all these amazing yeah. things. So maybe the, 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 the right has nothing to do with it. But maybe the <laughs> environment <laughs> has everything to do with it. So it's just a location that I chose that I felt cool, better... Um, communicate the message that I'm trying to say, that God is almighty and is powerful, and all the things that we see around us, he created it. So we're just using all that to infuse into the video, pretty much. That is okay. what I think. All right, before we get into your concert, I want mm -hmm. to know, you um, are abroad, and, yes. you know, the gospel music industry mm -hmm. over there, and then the Ghanaian gospel industry, is there something that you think we are not doing right here, or something that is lacking in the gospel music industry? I would say that I had the opportunity to last year attend the Stellas Awards, and by the grace of God, I'm a member of the Stellas over there. I'm trying oh, to okay. try to get myself into that community more. And when we did the first concert, I invited J.J. Hurston. He's one of the biggest American gospel artists. Right. And one of the things that I noticed at the Stellas Award is that it's a whole community on its own, and mm. they are super supportive. That is what I felt when I attended that show. Um, with us, I'm not very familiar with a lot of things here and the technicalities, mm -hmm. but I'm just thinking that if our churches will support the upcoming musicians a little bit, and all of us over here, I mean, in media or wherever it is, when we see Ghanaian songs that are really, really good, we can all, I mean, rally behind it and push it a little bit more. I think that would be great because a lot of people have some great content out there, but they don't really have the logistics to push it. So if people are attached out there to just be a blessing or supportive, I think we'll go far. So a little support here and there will go far. All right. That's support by coming up with a record label. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. But away from that, let's <laughs> talk about uh, Hetsi Koji Presents overflow experience yes tell us briefly tell us about the genesis of this whole concert you said it's been running for four years yes how did this start what we are supposed to expect this year on the 5th of march 2023 so how it started was i've always wanted to um introduce myself to the world as an artist and i didn't want to just release a song and oh, okay the song is released go and listen to it there's a way that you go about it so since i had the platform from royal house chapel and my church i decided to bring together the people of God. So Overflow itself, the concept or the uh, mission, it's a multicultural movement that was birthed in the U.S. And what we do is we bring different communities and different denominations together. You know how people have different ways of worshiping God? Yeah. But our structure is such that however you are, whoever you are, however you look, just come into his presence and just come and worship and just let go. And there's not going to be judgment. You don't have to look posh and proper or bougie to come. Just if you do <laughs> sneakers, we are fine with it. So that bridge, you know, it's a summer concert that I do. So that gave a lot of people the opportunity to come from different churches. And last year, we were honored to have delegations from the South African Embassy to come and grace the occasion. So we are doing great things. Over here in, the, um, in Ghana, the reason why I wanted to bring it together for the first time is that it, a lot of people in Ghana also are, I mean, a blessing to my music and they listen to my song. So I felt they've not really had or seen me in, I mean, I mean, live ministrations yeah. before. And I've, it's been a minute since I left Ghana. So I thought I could do the, I could bring the same energy and the same blessings that we are experiencing yeah. in the U.S. to Ghana. And then I'll be a blessing to the people of God. So I'm excited about this and I look forward to it being a great show. Wow. Yeah, big names there. Uh, can you run us through those of yes. the supporting? I, um, I see our very own Kofi 
Oh, yes. yes. He's he's not a guest on this table. That's oh, wow. why I said that. Yeah. That's amazing. So I have myself, I have the lion Akese Brimpon mm-hmm. on there also supporting. And then my very own brother, Kofi Wusepepra. I have Jayana Music, I have Seth Diamond, and then I have an amazing minister from Kumasi, Jackson Koe, mm-hmm. who is also coming to be a blessing. And apart from that, we have some other people who are surprised openness to the show as well. Okay. Yeah. So it's happening where? Royal House Chapel, Ahimfie. Circle okay. and then the time is 5 p.m. sharp and it's a free concert. It's a free concert. Finally, any message, acknowledgement before yes. we just go. I want to thank God Almighty for trusting me with the gifts first off, and I want to thank mm-hmm. my team here in Ghana um, for putting, I mean, helping me to put this together. I want to thank Metro TV for giving me the platform also to share, and everybody out there who is willing to support. Please, this is an invitation for you to come and support this ready course. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I want to invite everybody out there that look, March 5th is a free concert. All I need you to do is just put on anything that you want to put on and wear comfortable sneakers. And Let's just come into his presence and let's come and dance. And thank you so much for allowing me to be a blessing to all of you. Come and dance and have fun in the presence of, of the God. Mm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for sure. coming. Yeah. So um, we are going for a quick commercial break. When yeah. we return, we move into the last discussion for the day, and Desi will be taking us through that. So do stay tuned for more S Entertainment Review on Metro Television. <laughs>